And Coco Golf's just on at the moment, but we're starting a little bit earlier today because we have a special guest. And I, I teased this yesterday. Some of you kind of guessed it, but I didn't tell you that you got it right. So it's going to be a surprise to most of you. Um, to do a little bit of a preview, also talk about his channel, uh, talk about the tournament in general. And just if you have any questions, write them in the chat. I'll relay them to him. So let's get straight to it because uh, we've actually been chatting for a while. So we'll jump on straight away. All right. Cold Tennis is in the house. So if you don't know, Cold Tennis does... <laughs> What would, how would you explain your channel? So, yeah, what's going on, everyone? Glad to be here. So, Cult Tennis, if you haven't seen my channel already, it's pretty much video essays, documentaries, however you want to call them. I like to take really weird subjects in tennis and condense them into a, uh, a shortened type of 10, 12-minute documentary. It started out as just my favorite topics in tennis, Donald, Donald Young especially. <laughs> um, I made a weird video about blue clay that blew up, and that kind of got my channel rolling. And this is pretty much what I do full time now. So uh, it's been an interesting journey, but uh, it's awesome to be on here, Cam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. We love, I love your stuff. I watch all of it. It's, it's awesome. And we've had a chat a couple of times in the past. Um, and we've actually, we're just chatting. We've been chatting for probably the last 20 minutes. Um, by the way, Goff just won. So Federer will be on when Ooh, it, love in, it. in like 20 minutes. Um, all right. So yeah, if you have any questions in the chat, uh, write them out. Oh, people are saying that they're already subbed. If you're not subbed to Cold Tennis, I'll put the link in the description so you can go sub or if you go, you go check it out. Um, I mean, you'd be mad not to. If you're not a ten if you're a tennis fan, you should be watching. Uh, you'll be learning a lot out of you know history. I think you did like a Monica Salas video, uh, so you don't just do like recent you know events. You also go all the way back to history as well. So uh, a lot of people are already subbed, which is good to see. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna have a general chat, really. So. Um, Wimbledon so far, I know you've said that you uh, we got you on before the Federer match because you watch a lot of Federer. And how do you yeah, think his yeah. chances are, though? How, what do you think his chances are? You know, he's got a, probably a tougher draw than someone like a Djokovic. But what do you reckon uh, What do you reckon he's going to do? Do you reckon he can make the final? That's the dream final everyone seems to want. Yeah, so I get a bit of flack on my channel just because I try not to make it obvious how much of a Federer fan I am. But uh, I am a Federer fanboy, um, unfortunately. <laughs> I do love all the other players, though. I have to say that. I'd love to see Roger make a deep run again. I think quarterfinals, honestly, is realistic. He hasn't made a quarter, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think he's made a quarterfinal this year in any tournament he's played in. Um, no. But that'd be fantastic. But the thing is, people kind of you know, gave him a little flack in his match uh, two days ago because of how he played a lot of his core hand miss uh, hits. But I think the big thing is his footwork is really not that bad. And I think it's really adapted to the grass surface, you know? When you watch him at the at Roland Garros, it was obvious how much he's struggling just because of how much he had to run and slide and whatnot. But here, you know, he's just so good on grass. His movement is, is really something. We could see a quarterfinal finish, semifinals, eh, finals. I'll pray for it tonight. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. Against Gasquet today, though, I think uh, I think we might see a straight set victory. I don't think we're going to be too surprised if we see that. Yeah, I mean the record between him and Gasquet, eighteen two. Um, and like I think, I think I checked. He hasn't won a set against Federer in ten years. I don't think they've played. They haven't played recently because of both players haven't been around. I guess. But um, yeah, I I would be shocked if Gasquet wins. But then again, uh, Manorino was supposed to lose in straight sets according to my prediction, and that didn't happen. So Gasquet <laughs> might get a set, but I Federer should get through. And then also Norrie's going to be playing Federer if uh, he does win Federer. So Norrie's right. already in the third right. round. A lot of people were pretty hot on Nori and thinking that maybe Nori can do something against Fed. I'm not sure. Maybe the crowd can help Nori. But um, yeah, in terms of getting to the quarterfinals, you got the biggest probably biggest challenges would be Medvedev because Query's out now, so um, that's probably a good thing for Fed. And also, uh, who else is there? Chilich as well. They're probably the two big threats for Federer in that quarterfinal. But other than that, I mean, right. So now he goes right. pretty good too. That I mean, that could be a bit of a a bit of a tough one too, but we'll find out today. If he yeah, wins in straight it, sets, I mean, he's probably back it's, in town. It's going right? to be tough. You know, the, the thing is his, his draw, you know, you could say that his draw is technically somewhat open. You know, you don't have Nadal on that side anymore. You know, Murray is not a, a huge threat. I mean, Novak's completely on the other side of the draw. So I don't know, you know, Federer can really surprise us. I think, you know, Roger has shown some of his, you know, greatness coming back in 2017 based on how he won. Will he surprise us again one one more time this year? I don't know. 
Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see, though. I think we're going to see a surprise from, from Roger this tournament. I think if there's one tournament he really is going to put his all in is going to be Wimbledon. You know, going into Roland Garros, he even said, I'm not going to win this tournament. He probably didn't have as much confidence as he would have liked. And, of course, he didn't give up. But, you know, I don't think his back problems that he faced in Roland Garros that forced him to retire, I don't think he would make that a, a factor into retirement. Mm -hmm. If you agree, I'm not sure. But yeah. um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be something else for sure. Yeah. No, I, I – I agree. When he put out a French Open, I was not surprised at all. He pulled out because I was thinking, Wimbledon's the yeah. goal. He's not coming here to win the French Open. People were, I mean, people were pissed that he pulled out. Everyone was going, oh, he's dodging. He's dodging I the know. big names. Believe me, me too. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, he's not going to win the French Open. So why would he bother? You know, but um, by the way, a lot of people are asking in the chat, <laughs> can we talk about Jeannie Bouchard? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of Jeannie Bouchard questions. Um, yeah. What is, yeah. Like, Someone said, how did you meet Ginny Bouchard? Yeah, so this, is, uh, this has been a long time question. And actually, if you don't follow me on Twitter or even the social medias, I recommend following me there because I have talked about it uh, in length uh, there. So also, actually, I don't think a lot of people have actually seen my face. So this is what I look like. Yeah, this exactly. Is my workspace, essentially. It's actually a fairly ragtag setup. You can see my camera equipment and actually my weightlifting bench uh, <laughs> on the left there. So it's, it's nothing fancy over here. But anyway, so Ginny Bouchard, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story very quickly. I'll summarize it. Um, before I started making YouTube videos full time, I taught tennis. Um, after I graduated from school, I joined a company, um, that basically focuses on tennis management. And I, um, went from club to club around the United States. I'm from the U S, um, as a, either director of tennis or a tennis pro. Um, and this is going to disappoint a few people. So one event I went to was in California at Indian Wells. And this was, um, before the tournament started this year, I believe in 2018 or 2019, I believe. And uh, I met Jeannie at the tournament um, because my company hosted a charity type event and I was able to meet with Jeannie and actually hit with her and a few other players like Stefano Tsitsipas and uh, Francis Tiafo. And when that picture was taken at the end of the video, it was pretty much a mixed doubles exhibition type uh, little game we had and we had, just took a photo of everyone. Um, so I hate to say, I don't really know Jeannie personally. I've talked to her a handful of times at that event um, and I do play tennis. So I was a former, you know, tennis teaching pro and junior and whatnot, but, uh, I don't know Jeannie personally. It was more of a little inside joke at the end of the video. So no, we're not dating. She's not my sister cousin. My, like I'm not her father. I've heard a lot of weird, uh, guesses and assumptions, but, uh, to clear it up. No, we're nothing more than, but, uh, very minor pals. If I can even say that. Okay. Because I didn't, I didn't know that this was a thing. Like that uh, people were commenting on this. I have seen the Jeannie Bouchard video, uh, but I didn't <laughs> know that it was such a hot topic that people wanted to like that they wanted some inside scoop that you were like, you knew her personally somehow or um or whatever. That's fine. <laughs> Any chance of Kyrgios winning Wimbledon? I mean, my answer is no. No, no. 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 I mean, I, to, obviously, to, to say the obvious, he's been out for six months. It's really unlikely to see someone aside from Roger Federer at the 2017 Australian Open, to come back from such a long hiatus and, and, and win Wimbledon, especially considering he hasn't, what, has he not made it past the quarterfinals of a Grand Slam, I don't think? No. Nah. Australian um, Open, Wimbledon, that's fine. it. Yeah, yeah. He's playing fine, honestly. Third round, fourth round, maybe. Um, is, is he in, on Novak's side? Um, no. I think he's down the bottom with Zverev and Berrettini. I think he's in Zverev's part of the section. So it's very fourth rounds potential a potential matchup. Yeah, I, I like Nick a lot. I actually like Kyrgios a lot as a player. He gets a lot of flack for his attitude, but I think he's actually just very real, and I I really respect that. Um, but no, I don't I don't really see a, a past fourth round finish. Sad to say. Yeah, no, that's I, I'm I'm all for that as well. I don't even think even if he had like been playing for the last six months, Grand Slam tennis, I think he's got a couple of good matches, five setters, some epics, but I don't think he has the concentration for two weeks at this stage. He just doesn't. In right. Five sets, he just doesn't have it, uh, which sucks because I'm a, ma I'm a you know I'm a massive fan of him, and I wish he could. Um, who is? Oh, here we go. This is a good question. Who is Novak's biggest yep. active threat this tournament? That is a very good question. Ooh, that's good. You you start with this one. Um, all right. So obviously, Feder is probably the most obvious choice, but I'm going to go with a couple of different ones. Now, if you a yep. lot of people on the channel probably already know. 
that I've been popping up Zverev uh, a lot over the last couple of weeks uh, and with mixed results. But I still think Sasha Zverev is a big chance. Um, Rublev in the quarterfinals could be a very tough opponent for Djokovic if Rublev doesn't have to play a five-set match against Fanini today or tomorrow. I think, uh, sorry, right. tomorrow. Or, and then I think he might have, I'm looking at the draw, has Schwartzman potentially in the fourth round Rublev. So if he can get through both those matches without having to play hard tennis and he gets to Djokovic fresh, maybe he can do something. Um, right. Shapovalov... Again, if he makes it through, he had a five set in the first round. We saw on day one with Djokovic against Draper, the lefty from, from Britain, trouble Djokovic in that first set. Maybe Chapeau could do something. It's, but again, it's like we've only seen Roger Federer really do anything against Djokovic at Wimbledon. That's still left. Um, and Zverev, Medvedev, Berrettini, they're all going to play him in the final. And if Djokovic makes the final... He doesn't lose very often, so it's a tough one for me. What about you? What do you reckon? I, I'm assuming you probably think Federer, maybe. Uh, again, it's it's so hard to say. I I have to say I think he's going to win the tournament. I don't think that's a, a wild uh, assumption by any means. Um, I think you know players like uh, Shapovalov and, and Rublev could be huge threats to him, but. I don't think any player has really shown him any particular trouble at a Grand Slam, um, well, especially Wimbledon, I, I, I should say. Um, he's just he's just really mastered Wimbledon. You know, Federer takes takes the cake as the you know king of grass, so to speak. But you know, Djokovic just has really shown his chops on every single surface imaginable. And uh, to be honest, I think grass is is one of his best surfaces. He, his, his finesse and his he stays on his feet so well. Not, not a lot of people watch footwork enough, but you know the way he moves around the court, it, it's it's not as graceful as, as as Roger, in my opinion. But his balance and flexibility, it, it, it's it's un, uncanny to be honest. If I were to give him a, a real threat, I would say Rublev, considering he's just been playing so well for two years now. I think we're going to see one day, if not this tournament, one day him give Novak a real good five set match. Shapovalov, not as much, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I have to say um, those two players, I don't think Rogers, unfortunately much of a threat for Novak, just, just going based on fitness levels right now. Yep. Um, who knows? Maybe a uh, Kudla is going to give him a, yeah. a nice run for his money in the, in the next round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the, yeah. Maybe the qualifier would give him a, give him a test tomorrow. We've seen some weird things already during this tournament. So maybe that happens. Um, yeah, no, I, I reckon, well, the thing is, Rublev's never actually played Djokovic, so we have no idea what that match looks like. <laughs> we've oh, seen, okay. we've seen Rublev beat Nadal, you know, uh, on the clay this year. Rublev's made the quarterfinals, right. I think, of every other slam, but he hasn't played Djokovic ever, um, which, and he, I think he was actually supposed to, because one of your videos is on the Adria tour, which, well, this time last right, year was right, the right. biggest story in tennis, because there was nothing else to talk about, really. Um, <laughs> and... That I think Rublev and Djokovic were actually supposed to be playing in the final of that event before it got canned because uh, of the virus. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. That's the only time that we would have seen any sort of match between them. So yeah, that could be that could be a little bit little bit interesting. So yeah. Um, all right, let's get to yeah. um, what time does the match start? Uh, it's supposed to be starting in about ten minutes time. Players are coming out on court pretty soon, so we'll uh, yeah we'll keep you updated. Don't worry. Um, what else we had? We had someone ask about how far can Murray go. He's got Chapeau tomorrow. Um, yeah. And then yeah. he's got, potentially he's got Batista Agu in the fourth round and then potentially has, well, after that, he's kind of got a really good draw. Quarterfinal against either Tiafo, uh, Evans, Hashinov or Quarter. So the next two rounds are going to be tough for Murray, but if he can get through those, maybe the quarterfinals or, or maybe the semis, I'd, yeah, I mean, you know, me and you were just talking about this right before we started the stream about how impressed we were with how Murray's been playing this year. You know, especially again talking about fitness levels. You know, for any of you who aren't tennis players, it's it's just so tough to come back from a long break, and your strokes are going to be there. The timing might be a little off, but the one thing that just takes forever to come back is that footwork, those little muscles in your legs that you don't even think about. You know, you need to kind of grow them back and, and retrain them to work. So the footwork. You know, you understand the movements, but those little split step, you know, quick time movements, that is, that is tough. And for someone like Murray to come back and, and win some amazing five set matches, that's 
really, really impressive and could be indicative depending on how fit he is currently um, going in. But I'm going to be watching him with, with, you know, good intent and, and really see what he's got, because I think he can, you know, give some players run for their money this tournament. And you, you can't discount the fact that the entire country is behind him, you know, right there. So, yep. I don't know. We, we could see a, a Murray quarterfinal, to be honest. I'm not going to uh, put money on it, but uh, <laughs> in my mind, it's going to happen. Yeah. I, I mean, I got, I've had a lot of questions over the last probably year or so about Murray and like, is he a top, can he get back to the top 10? Can he get back to the top five? Can he win a slam again? I don't think he can do any of those, but I think a run at Wimbledon, if not this year, eventually one more good run, one, maybe one more semifinal. Maybe it's this year, you know, maybe it's opening up that way, but yeah, I think again, it's such a random, such a random tournament, this one. And, uh, someone just uh, going to the women's side. Now someone just asked about is Barty the favorite now to win? I think so. I mean, who else is there? Sabalenka is kind of unproven. Sviontek, maybe. But that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Has 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 Barty won Wimbledon? I'm kind of blanking. No, no. She's uh, she won the French, and then she. Right. I think her best result is a fourth round. Um, yeah. But she's got the game to win. I mean, it, you know, she's got all the all the shots, and now she's got a pretty good draw um, with Svetlana losing. And also Serena is out as well. So, yeah. I mean, the only – it's it's crazy. Um, the only seeds that are really left from the top 10, there's only four seeds left. We've got uh, Barty, Sabalenka, Sviontek, and Pliskova. And I don't think anyone right. thinks Pliskova is going to win. Um, and Sabalenka is still, I think, unproven. And the other two have won French Open. So it's like – yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Like, she sh- – she should be the favorite. I would expect Barty to be the favorite now. But yeah, someone said Barty's overrated. Eh, she's the world number one for a reason, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I've been hearing that a lot, actually. You know, people do comment quite often. I think, even, honestly, even Serena might have um, alluded to that at one period that Barty wasn't like the true kind of contender mm-hmm. of, of the number one status. She's amazing. I mean, she's such a good player. And, you know, Australia should really be proud to have such an amazing player at number one. I think that's kind of the thing. She just doesn't get enough press, enough hype that really people take her seriously as the number one. And maybe it's the fact that she hasn't won enough Grand Slams to really solidify that status. But to be honest, aside from the Williams sisters, like what woman has won enough Grand Slams to really be considered a number one player, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm... I think she's going to... I mean, she's had, you know... She, yeah. No, you go, you go. I was going to say, she said, you know, a bumpy road a little bit this tournament already, but I mean, you know, just talking about focus, you know, it's weird. Again, we were talking about another player, Coco Goff, you know, some of these players just have the focus. You can tell they're, they're in it to win it. So I think her, and we might see some, you know, better things from, from Coco as the, as the tournament goes on. I think both are going to be uh, deep runners this tournament. Yeah. Now I'll put my hand up and say, I was one of those people that said body, is probably not world number one if she, because she kind of the players that she like you know the, I think the best player she beat at the French Open for that win was Madison Keys who was like 15 in the world Osaka has more slams Halep's got more slams Serena she's never beaten Serena like but you can only beat the players that are there and she's beaten she won every she beat everyone to win Miami you know she beat everyone to win uh, you know the the clay court tournaments as well. It's it's kind of hard, and she also you know she's done well at the Australian Open as well. It's she's number one, and with Osaka not playing, I don't think there's going to be a change you know very soon. Uh, especially if Barty does well here, it's only going to increase the gap. So yeah, she might not. A lot of people might not say she's the true number one because she got a bit of a free ride, I guess, last year with the frozen rankings. But hey, she won the WTA Finals in 2019. She you know she. She's definitely the best player in the world. You know, she's number one. She has to be the best player. People are saying Osaka is probably the true number one. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess if they played, you know, if they played in a battle, who, you know, if there was a match that would determine who's the world number one, who would win that match? Probably Osaka, but it's not what it's based on. Yeah. It's it's based on the whole season. Um, what's your opinion on the slippery courts? Okay, that's an interesting one. That is good. Do you have any opinions on the slippery courts? Um, I think who said it, I think Kyrio said it best actually the other day, um, in the sense that Wimbledon should be fast, 
you yep. know, slipperiness aside, you know, this is how grass has traditionally been. And I think what makes grass grass, you know, players don't come here to play on hard courts or clay courts. They come here to play on the fast grass that really favors servers, potentially serving volleyers. Yep. The fact that it's been seemingly more slippery, I'd love to get some IBM stats as to actually, is it actually more slippery? I think they actually said they were going to do something about that. Um, what exactly is causing more players to fall? And if more players have been falling more, and especially the serious injuries like um, Serena or Manorino, has that been more yeah. common? I don't think I don't think so, actually. I think that's more just we're seeing it now, so we assume it's something new. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I like it. I like how it's playing fast. The balls are staying low, in my opinion. So I don't know. I, I, I like it. I, I like Wimbledon being traditionally Wimbledon. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'm the same. I think I actually just uh, retweeted something a few hours ago. There was a soundbite of Kyrgios um, at a changeover, and he had the camera in his face, and he was got like he said, "Everybody at home, this court is slow." And like he he actually talked about the whole thing. Uh, so go check that yeah. out if you haven't already. Um, I retweeted I it, but it's like, um, yeah, he was commenting on this is not a grass court. This is too slow. And that was on the night that he played under the roof against Umber. So the, not yesterday, right. but the day before. Um, right. As for the players slipping, I mean, it's kind of like, how do you how do you fix that? You know, without there being sunny weather, they've had rain all week. You know, it's 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 tough. But um, I think if the players that had been like, if there hasn't been injuries because of the slipping, it probably wouldn't be an issue because I think the court's going to get better and better. But um, I don't know who it was. There was a there was a. A tweet, I don't know who did it. Maybe it was one of the ex-professional players um, saying that if you can't play on grass, you know, no, no, it was uh, Todd Woodbridge. He came out with a tweet saying, grass is slippery. You know, you got to learn how to how to move on grass. It's different to every other surface, all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, grass courts, like it, it would be interesting to see at the end of the tournament how many of the big, big servers got through, like Opelka lost, which I think... Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. It's a, and Isner as well. They both lost Isner, to short Isner, guys. Yeah. Um, is that a result of the courts not being fast? You know, like that kind of thing as well. It could could be a factor. But again, I think Federer said something about it as well. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. I mean, that's what's interesting. That's what's interesting about tennis, in my opinion. You have the kind of, you have the people who love uniformity, who love kind of the same thing every tournament. I'm a huge fan of diversity and seeing completely new things every tournament. I just think it makes the game number one, more interesting, but also draws in new fans. And that's what I love seeing for tennis drawing in new fans. Um, you know, throw back to that blue play video I made, even though there were some inherent issues with the surface that made it just a poor surface to play on. I think it did add a great deal of variety to the game. And I love to see that the battle of surfaces video I made. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something kind of stupid it's, you know, those two examples maybe, but, um, I like seeing the differences. I don't want to go to, again, I don't want to go to Wimbledon to see a, another U S open. I want to go to Wimbledon to see these, you know, crazy low bounces. And I don't want to see players falling over, but it's like, you know, going to go into an ice hockey game to see players fight, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't say you go there to see that, but you love to see some of that chaos go on. I think Wimbledon's one of the last tournaments to really exemplify that. Um, I'm actually making a, a video soon about, another type of one of those blue clay type surface things. And I think it's going to be really interesting about a previous thing. So okay. keep an eye on that. If you like the blue clay video, because we're going to see something in the future. Okay. Sneak preview. That's awesome. And all right. Yeah, yeah. Players around court. <laughs> so we'll get, we'll get to the last question. Yeah. This is a question that someone yeah. keeps spamming. Who's the real goat? Is it Marcus Willis or is it Donald Young? Who is the goat? Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. If, if they if they were to play in a Wimbledon final, we would we'd see some theatrics. It'd be a five setter, twelve all. It might be one of those matches. It just never ends, like the the Isner Mahout match. Yeah, I have to say it to all you uh, English people, but Donald Young, he he's the true goat. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. He's if you read my Twitter bio, it says Donald Young, twenty twenty one U.S. Open champion. That's been there for about two years now. So get ready because that man is going from. Uh, from futures to, to Grand Slam in three months. So keep an eye out for, for my boy Donald. And he's still active, right? He's the only player. Like the, he, Willis he's just active. retired. He's, he's, 
Yeah, Donald's staying under the radar for a reason. He has something brewing. We 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 DM a few times, so he's got something brewing. Marcus, that that's a sad retirement, but uh, I'm <laughs> glad to see him go with one with one great Wimbledon under his belt. <laughs> and the winner can play Bernie Tomic in the fight in the in the championship oh. after the championship. <laughs> and we're gonna make a cult tennis exhibition with uh, oh, with you commentating, Cam. Just those three players, round robin. I'm not a fan of Bernie, so I don't know if I can be there because I'll probably right, just talk shit on him. I'm going to leave the stream then. <laughs> uh, anyways, thanks for joining us. Uh, again, link down below, Cold Tennis. Uh, we'll definitely get you back on. Um, yeah. If not, I know, I know you said you're busy um, through the rest of the tournament. Um, yeah. So I'll have a chat with you anyway. But uh, if not, probably the US Open series when that comes around as well because it'd be a better time as well. I think it's a better time zone for me too. It might be early morning instead of being... 2 a.m. So we'll uh, we'll yeah, get you yeah. back on because I know there's a lot of people with a lot of questions. And by then, probably got a couple more videos coming out. Do you have any videos that you want to, you know, I know you said you were just teasing one then. Is there any videos that are coming out? Yeah. Or wh when's the next video is probably the best question. When's the next video we should be expecting or waiting out for? Yeah. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of flack because uh, I haven't made a video in quite a while. And that's not actually true. I've been making one video for a very long time. It's just, uh, it's, it's slow, you know, it's, 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 you're waiting for a great one in, in my opinion. Um, it's going to be about a lot of people on Instagram have guessed that it's going to be about why a certain country is seemingly not succeeding in tennis. A certain big country is not succeeding in tennis. So you're going to see some great insight from, uh, from cult tennis about, uh, why that is, I don't know, terrible, terrible teaser, terrible description, but it's going to be a fun video. All right. Good, yeah. I, I guess, I mean, if I didn't do a live show, I, even if I don't do a live show for a week, I get asked, where are you? Where are you? So yeah. um, that's only a good thing. It I'm means here. that people want to people want to see more of what you're doing. So, And I know I'm a massive fan, so I can't wait to see some more as well. Nah, I appreciate it, Kevin. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, Andrew. We'll get you on. Uh, we'll definitely get you on soon uh, again as well. So everybody in the chat, go check out Cold Tennis if you haven't already. I know a lot of you already said you have subscribed, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, we'll get you on uh, very soon. And hopefully Federer does well today for you. What's the prediction today? Is it going to be straight sets, Fed? Straight sets. Take this to the book. 6-3, 6-2, 7-6. going to be a tough third set. So uh, Gasquet's going to pull a trick on us, but uh, it's going to be Roger in straight sets. All right. No worries. Well, we'll go around the courts because there's been a lot of matches going on, and then we'll come back and we'll do the preview. Again, thanks, Andrew, for uh, for joining us. Join. Make sure you go follow Cold Tennis.